American Vision presents Meet with the Speakers. How much do you know about the history of the conservative movement? I have with me Dr. Gary North, who is the author of History of the Conservative Movement in video form. This is a production of American Vision, uh, 15 uh, 30 minute uh, sessions. Uh, the first volume is uh, eight, eight sessions, and then the second volume will include seven. And in addition to that, there are numerous, uh, uh, very difficult to find uh, conservative books that we've made available in PDF form uh, on these uh, videos. Uh, Dr. North, I, I want to go back um, to the 1940s to, in many cases, as a very obscure uh, figure, uh, conservatives generally know, but I would say the general public uh, has not. It's, you mentioned Glenn Beck in an earlier um, uh, in, in an earlier interview, uh, I don't know how much he's, he's talked about the road to serfdom and uh, Frederick uh, Hayek, but t tell us a little bit about the Hayek and the road to serfdom and uh, the, the impact of that book back then, which was slow in coming, but today it is having a, gr a greater impact among conservatives. In every generation, there'll be a key book for a particular movement or a worldview. There's no question that the key book of the 20th century in the field of free market economics was The Road to Serfdom. The author was an Austrian. He was an emigre living in Great Britain at the time. And the war was on. So he was not living where he had planned to, which was in London, the London School of Economics. They moved them to Cambridge because of the bombing. So he had been at Cambridge at the same time that John Maynard Keynes was at Cambridge, and they became very close friends. And in a very real sense, you had these two men, highly skilled writers, good lecturers, Keynes a spectacular raconteur, battling for the minds of economists around the world and beyond just economists battling for the minds of the leadership of the British nation. Keynes was not a socialist. Neither of them bought into socialism. Neither believed that the government should own the means of production. But Keynes was, well, a Keynesian. And he believed in the intervention of the state to drag a country out of recession. He was a major figure in the Treasury at the time. And a war was on, so you had a great deal of central planning. In the midst of this crisis, this worldwide economic and social crisis, larger than anything that the West had ever seen, in 1944, Hayek writes this little book on the road to serfdom, which is a superb title for marketing purposes, in which he argues that if you allow the state to be in control of the distribution of wealth, you allow the state to be in control of the distribution of ideas and power because money is power and the state can then determine who gets published who doesn't the state can determine in this sense whose projects get funded and whose don't and he was convinced that the rise of central planning interventionist planning along the lines that Keynesians were beginning to advocate during wartime would lead, if they continued after the war, to a significant decline of freedom and a decline of economic productivity. The book came out in 44. It sold not badly for a wartime book, but it was not well known outside of Great Britain. It was picked up by the University of Chicago Press, one of the very early books of that press. And so in academic circles, it was, it was known, and academic economists were beginning to hear about the book by 1945. What gave the book prominence was an astounding, almost unbelievable event, and that is the Reader's Digest decided to summarize it, which is just inconceivable, of the Reader's Digest summarizing a work of an Austrian economic figure living in Great Britain uh, uh, writing for an academic audience. This was just incredible. But Hayek was a great writer and the ideas were very powerful. And that book launched his career 
in terms of a broader population outside just a bunch of economists reading each other. And the book began to spread. It became a popular book within what I would call the intellectual American right because it was well argued and it was published by a respected high prestige press of a major university. So in that respect, Hayek's book was a major event. The other one followed the next year, at least in the United States in 46, it was a little book by Henry Hazlitt called Economics in One Lesson. Hazlitt was a prominent writer. He was a financial columnist for the New York Times, a gifted writer, and this book also began to sell by the day, by the terms of the day, by the, by the thousands, which in those days for the conservatives, that was a big seller. Those two books began to, to force a rethinking of the entire wartime economic system and the New Deal legacy. And so those who were against Roosevelt, and there weren't a lot of them, but those who were convinced that the Roosevelt New Deal was a liability, grabbed on to Hayek's book and Hazlitt's books, and, and those two books became sort of bulwarks of the conservative movement's opposition to the expansion of federal power. Now, again, the, what seemed to be insignificant, you got the road to serfdom, you got economics in one lesson done in the, in the 40s, uh, and in, in essence, these, these ideas were being ground out very slowly over time. Very, very slowly. And we did, in fact, see some, uh, some movement in all this. In fact, you could, you could say that the, the, the libertarian movement, uh, the conservative movement, at least on the economic side of things, uh, is, is really in its heyday. I mean, here we are in 2000, 2010. Now, these ideas are really being pushed from, from, uh, you know, from a position where we didn't have before. And we, we did, haven't talked much about technology, but uh, we talked about uh, uh, Fulton Sheen on, on television. You had three, major, three networks, ABC, CBS, NBC. That was it. Uh, I mean, today you can get your message out literally overnight uh, and get it out to uh, a bigger market than, in, in essence, the, the major networks uh, can do today. I mean, you mentioned Glenn Beck in an earlier segment and uh, how he's driving everybody crazy. You got Rush Limbaugh driving people crazy. Uh, and so these ideas, which started off with, you know, two obscure books, those ideas are being now pushed out far beyond anything that either author ever could have imagined. That's correct. And this gets back to what any organization that deals with ideas has got to present to its supporters and readers, and that is most of the time the message takes a long time to begin to get traction. And this is only understandable. Society, remember the conservatives are right. The conservative position is that revolutionary violence is almost always bad. That violence in the streets is almost always bad, and it leads to expansion of the state, and it leads to expansion of state power to fight it, and if the state is involved in any sense, they, they increase regulation over people's lives. So the conservative position has always said it should be by persuasion, not by violence, because violence always strengthens the hand of the state, and when it doesn't do that, it strengthens the hand of revolutionaries who, if they ever get their hands on the state, will make it even worse, the classics being the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution. So the conservative position is don't push it too fast. Don't overplay your hand. Don't look to the state to implement the whole package in a brief period of time because that's going to create enormous opposition because people don't want ideas shoved down their right. throats. Yeah. So this is consistent with the conservative ideology of slow change over long periods of time to get an idea out to the general public, anybody who pitches overnight sensation, overnight rollback, is going counter to the historic conservative position. In our next session, I want to deal with the rise of the Christian right and a particular event uh, that took place with, uh, with Ronald Reagan. 
uh, and uh, which is a, a very surprising event, especially since Christians had been out of the political realm for, for since probably about since 1925. The history of the conservative movement featuring Dr. Gary North from the first Tea Party to the contemporary Tea Parties. Now available at AmericanVision.com.